I've long struggled with finding a way to transfer large files between systems that I own. Obviously, small storage devices like flash drives and even portable hard drives are becoming cheaper and cheaper as time goes on, especially ones that have large capacities. For example, I bought a 64 gigabyte USB 3.0 flash drive for merely $30 at Fry's Electronics the other day. But despite the fact that these storage mediums are coming down in price very, very rapidly over the past couple years, they still have their limitations. Now, since I'm constantly working with obviously large video files and stuff like that, <laughs> or I would be if I was uploading videos, a something like a flash drive or even an external hard drive, while it does work, is still not the most efficient way to get it done. Now, previously I was using two Windows-based machines, so obviously my laptop and my desktop, sometimes I would edit videos on the go, and sometimes I edit them on my desktop. So previously I was intermittently using Home Group or Windows Home Group to transfer these files between my systems on a local area network. Now, if you've ever used Windows Home Group, then you know that that's a, a hoot and a holler. It's a great time. Basically, Windows Home Group is far from perfect and it has a lot of issues with maintaining connections and all that sort of stuff. Ever since I started working on the Hackintosh you see behind me and editing videos over there, it's become increasingly difficult to transfer large files between my Windows-based desktop and obviously my Mac OS-based Hackintosh. So initially I was considering just buying like a one terabyte external hard drive to transfer files between them and then formatting it in such a way that I could use that on both operating systems. Unfortunately, the file system types that are compatible with both simultaneously have their limitations as well. So what's, what's the next best option you ask? <laughs> Buying a NAS. After deciding that a NAS was the best way for me to achieve my goal of easily accessible mass storage, I headed over to Fry's Electronics to take a look at what budget-oriented options they had in this space. Unsurprisingly, there were not a ton of options in the sub $100 price range I was hoping for. Some didn't even include gigabit ethernet connections effectively making them fancy external hard drive enclosures. Eventually I settled on the Xi XL 2-Bay NAS. It came in at $79.99, $10 less than on Amazon, which is a rarity with fries. This low budget solution offers two full size 3.5 inch drive bays with mounting hardware for easy setup, a low power Marvel Armada 380 CPU clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. I say this like I've heard of this chip before, but I haven't. Regardless, it performs admirably as we'll get into in a moment. Alongside that, we have 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory. It's not much, but it should be enough for what we'll be using it for. As for I.O., we have two USB 3.05 gigabit ports, one USB 2.0 port, and the biggest feature I was looking for, a one gigabit LAN port for local area network access. The front end of the unit is host to the single USB 2.0 port, the power button, a copy slash sync button, and a series of access light indicators. The back of the unit is where you'll find the two USB 3 ports, the gigabit LAN connection, and the power brick port. Setup was pretty simple and straightforward. Drive installation is a breeze using the plastic bracket and four of the included screws to mount the drive in the bracket. The bracket then simply slides into the enclosure and the SATA and power connectors on your drive plug right in. I then plugged in the power brick and ethernet cable included with the unit and ran the ethernet cable over to my router plugging that into an empty port. I paired my NAS with a 2TB Ironwolf NAS optimized hard drive from Seagate, which ran me about another $80. This leaves me with an empty bay for future expansion should I ever need to add another hard drive. The web UI is pretty decent. Not the most intuitive thing by any measure, but anyone with a bit of PC experience can figure out how to use it fairly quickly. My biggest gripe with this is that the creation of new folders requires the use of this web interface. On top of that, there's some default folders for things like music and videos, which I promptly hid to reduce clutter within whatever operating system I was accessing it from. Other than that, the web interface is perfectly fine and offers quite a few features like hardware monitoring as well as the ability to set up remote access should you desire the ability to do so. The quick start guide included in the box is easy to understand and in my experience allows for very fast setup of the unit. I had it up and running fully within about 20 minutes of getting home.
As for actually using the NAS, it's fairly straightforward. When synced with the web interface, it is accessible through either Finder or Windows Explorer as a network storage device. You will have to create a user to log in as if you want both read and write permissions, but this only takes a moment through the web UI. From my brief tests, it's about as fast as you would expect from a gigabit LAN connection. Transfer speeds of large files top out around 120 megabytes per second, about as fast as a home group, but without all the connection issues, and it's accessible from different operating systems. That's a win in my book. Just for fun though, can you edit 1080p 60fps video off of it? Why yes, yes you can. Granted, my camera only records at 35 megabits per second, so it's pretty low bitrate, all things considered. I have to admit, though, I'm pretty impressed. Importing footage into Final Cut Pro is not noticeably slower than from a local hard drive, and scrubbing through the footage is smooth and responsive. This thing performs remarkably well for its price. So what's the catch, then? There has to be some major con to a NAS this cheap? Well, for one thing, its CPU and RAM combo are nowhere near powerful enough to transcode 4K videos if that were something you wanted to do. It only has two drive bays, so expansion is also limited. Speed is also limited by the single gigabit LAN port. None of these things bother me, however. My biggest gripe with this thing, funnily enough, is the noise. You can easily hear the drive spinning up and down, which isn't a big deal. However, my unit in particular emits a quiet humming noise that slowly pitches up and down over a short period of time. I believe it has to do with the fan on the back of the unit, but I can't be certain so this issue may be limited to mine in particular. It's mildly annoying, but even as I write this review, I've already learned to tune it out. Other than that though, this thing is rock solid. Time will tell if it survives in the long term, but at the very least, I'm not worried about the hard drive dying since Seagate has a pretty good track record with their NAS drives. So, do I recommend buying it? If you're looking for a cheapest MASH storage solution that is accessible from multiple devices, then yes, you'll be hard pressed to find something better at the time of writing this.